Welcome to the Aurora tutorial. By now, you've probably heard a bit of Aurora's potential, but we're going to dive deeper under the hood of this module and discover all the possibilities it can hold, from the front panels, the configurable settings on the USB drive, and a few patch examples and overviews of how to get your sound out of Aurora. I think we should start the video off by explaining what spectral processing is and what FFT is, and I really love this stuff and it's become quite fascinating to understand. I know you don't want the academic explanation, so I'll just give you the gist of it. Spectral processing is a way of manipulating audio in the frequency domain rather than the traditional time domain, because when we talk about reverbs, we're talking about time, right? So we used a phase vocoder engine inside of Aurora, and that can convert audio from the time domain into the frequency domain, and it messes it all up in the best way possible and it then converts it back to the time domain. So this is how we accomplished effects like time stretching, frequency blurring, and harmonization all independent from one another. Fast Fourier transformation is the process of taking audio and converting it to a sum of sine waves, which mimics the original sound. So cool. These sine waves are then manipulatable, both in time and in frequency domains. So get this, the more sine waves, the more accurate the recreation. Using this algorithm, Aurora is able to control pitch and time separately, which creates those unique spectral reverbs that are unlike anything you've heard before. So now that you understand the context a little bit more about how we built Aurora, let's check out the main controls used to manipulate the spectral domain. We'll start off this section with Aurora in the initial knob position, which I do highly recommend. I think that the initial knob position is a great way to learn Aurora. So we're starting with the options text file all set to default, and we're gonna start with a nice simple surface patch here. That'll do just fine. I'm gonna begin the tutorial by covering what we see on Aurora's front panel and the sounds you can immediately get, pushing buttons and twisting knobs. But one thing we can't ignore is the most eye-catching portion of the front panel, the LEDs. The LED UI on Aurora is a responsive visual feedback for the state of your module that provides information on a whole lot of different parameters inside of Aurora. We'll talk in greater detail about each of these indicators as we come across them in this video. Let's start out with the first patch points on Aurora, the audio inputs and outputs. Aurora has true stereo I.O. with unique spectral analysis on the left and right channels. That being said, Aurora's left input normals to both channels if no cable is present in the right input, so you still get Aurora's stereo goodness even if you're using a mono sound source. Here in the center of the module, we have the mix knob. Mix blends between the dry and wet signals and reaches both 100% wet and 100% dry. Though this knob is fairly straightforward, it does have a unique secondary function that we'll cover in the next video. Time will be the one function of Aurora you're likely familiar with sonically when thinking of a reverb, but with a twist. Turning up time blurs the amplitude component. Different than a traditional decay, Time actually stretches out your sound into the tail and is consistently responding to the input signal. So as you can hear, turning up time from our initial positions results in a lush, beautiful time-stretched reverb. Blur is the other side of the spectral coin, stretching the frequency component of the audio. You can almost think of it like a spectral slew, but affecting individual points within the frequency domain. And the results can be unlike anything you've ever heard before, and even more so when changing your reverb's atmosphere and FFT size. Don't worry, we'll dive into those functions a little bit later in the tutorial. Reflect is Aurora's built-in solution for creating incredibly long reverbs from incredibly short sounds. Turning the knob takes us through a set of multi-delay time zones, each with unique stereo characteristics. Though the time zones are fixed, 
They follow a general path of short to long delay times, with the first zone ranging in the comb territory. This zone sounds fantastic on all sound sources, but it's particularly fine for adding comb-like transients into percussion. And as we continue to sweep reflect, you'll notice all the delay lines stretching out and getting more complex in both their multi-tap and stereo characteristics. So this, in combination with time, will stretch out your sound immensely. Here's a fun fact about reflect. At the very end of the reflect knob, the delay times and tap gain levels are randomized every half second. Let's give that a listen. So the end of reflect is perfect for texturing your reverb and giving it a subtle glitch feel. Filtering is no stranger in the world of reverbs, but Aurora's atmosphere knob is so much more than that. Atmosphere applies multiple spectral filters to the signal, from adding and removing harmonic content to shaping the harmonic content to create new timbres from your sound. Atmosphere's initial position is at the center of the knob. Depending on your input and blur settings, Atmosphere's lower settings can either sound like a traditional damp or a sci-fi sound designer in a knob. Notice the LEDs as we turn down Atmosphere. The right side of the LED interface is affected by the Atmosphere setting. When the knob is down, all the LEDs on the right turn to red. You can see how having the LEDs can help you know your reverb state at any given moment. So you may be patching and think, why is my sound acting this way? And then a quick look at the LEDs will indicate what and why your sound is behaving a certain way, much quicker than turning all the knobs just to find out. Pretty cool. So as we turn up atmosphere past the initial center position, you'll notice Aurora's wet signal getting filled with additional harmonics. These are added harmonics created by Aurora that are non-existent in the original input signal. This section of knobs lends itself to sweeping movements in your patch and can act as a crescendo in your piece. Finally, in the top section of Atmosphere, you hear a high-pass filter on your signal. You can think of Atmosphere as a bandpass filter built out of separate FFT filters that interact with your signal in no way like an actual bandpass filter. It's sort of like a bandpass filter, but not at all. And just like the lower end of Atmosphere, the higher end of atmosphere affects all the LEDs as well, turning them white at the top end of the knob. Alright, let's bring atmosphere back to center and we'll bring both the filtering and the LED colors to harmonious neutrality with the rest of Aurora. Last but certainly not least in our knob overview is warp. Warp is a pitch shifter, shifting the wet signal pitch either up or down a three octave range. So we can easily create oceanic reverbs or crystallized shimmers with the turn of a knob. And you'll notice as we hit the octaves, these two LEDs on the side of warp will turn green. And when we are off an octave, they're purple just giving us a little more guidance as to where Aurora is. Another fun fact about warp, it tracks one volt per octave. And as we've already heard, Aurora can take us to a lot of places beside your bread and butter reverbs and can even make for a great sound source itself. Of course, it doesn't generate sound on its own, but it can act as a complementary sound source to your input signal. Send arpeggios, jump octaves, or build reverberating harmonies. We can't wait to hear how you take advantage of this feature. Aurora has two button gate functions just below the USB port, and both can be used to bring a dynamic performative aspect to Aurora. So first, let's talk about reverse, which plays the incoming audio backwards into the effects chain, creating reversed reverb swells. Ah, uh, that's the stuff. Now, check this out. 
This is a cool patch from our manual that takes the reverse function to another level. All right, here's my straight sequence generated from Bloom, which is driving our chord voice into Aurora. But this time I'm gonna use the clock from Bloom, where my sequence is running a division two times slower than chord's clock. You can see that here with the clock pulse. So if I plug the clock out of Bloom into the reverse CV, you can hear how Aurora creates this boomerang effect in between notes, sending reverberations out into the ether and then pulling them right back in. So cool. Next up is Freeze, where the real fun begins. Now I'm just kidding, this whole thing has been fun, right? Freeze locks the incoming audio and holds it until deactivated. Simple enough. But the neat part is that the frozen audio is now completely manipulatable by Aurora. Let's take a listen. Oh, I think I, I think I forgot where we started. All right, let's see. All right. And that concludes the front panel controls for Aurora, which can immediately get you to the farthest reaches of the sonic landscape. But we aren't done there. In the next video, we're going to dive into the under the hood functions of Aurora, which let you really fine tune your spectral reverb to exactly how you want. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you there.